Hi, welcome to this new modern C++ course. This course is designed for everybody. If you're a complete beginner and never touch C++ in your life, then don't worry, just start from the start and I hope that by the end of the course you're going to be able to do pretty advanced things. If you know a thing or two about C++, then feel free to jump around, watch this video or that. I mean, at this point you know better than I do what you want to do with it. But the core idea behind this course is that you can see for yourself what the whole modern C++ business is about. Or should I even say C++ for yourself? Okay, so let's start with what is modern C++. C++ is a relatively old language. It has been created by Bjarne Straustrup in about 1985, if I'm not mistaken, and originally descended from the C programming language. It still resembles a little bit the syntax, but it's a very, very different language, so don't confuse, uh, confuse them. C++ is a wildly used language. It's used all over the place by millions of people all over the world, and that's why it actually has a standardization committee, because at such a scale you have to make sure that the features that go into the language and the ones that don't go into the language actually make sense. So this standardization committee comes up with a new version of C++ standard every three years. Now this brings us to modern C++. Whenever people say modern C++, what they actually mean is uh, C++ standard that starts from C++11. However, in this course we're going to be mostly targeting C++17. And at this point you might wonder why not C++20? Well, this is a very good question and uh, the reason is not that simple. So generally speaking, whenever a standardization committee releases a new standard, they, um, they put a set of rules, but it's not ready to use yet. Um, the standard can be ready to use when the tooling experts, like compiler developers and whatnot, actually implement those rules into the tools that help us write C++. And that process can take a couple of years. Then on top of that, the organizations uh, have to uh, actually start using this new standard. And uh, the libraries have to actually change to accommodate this new standard and to allow for the standards to be used all over the place. And so this whole process actually takes quite some time. So at this point, I think C++ 17 is a decently modern standard that is decently widely used. So we're going to be focusing on that, but we're going to also speak a little bit about what would change if we would go down to C++ 14 or 11, or if we would go up to C++ 20. Maybe at some point there will be a separate video or a separate course on the C++20, but we'll see if we get there. Which actually brings us to this course um, and the reasons for this course to exist at all. There is definitely plenty of material about how to code in C++. There, there is an endless number of books, there is an endless number of videos. I think if you try to watch all the tutorials on C++ that you find, say, on YouTube, then I don't think your life is going to be enough for all of that. Um, the problem with that is that historically C++ has been taught as in a kind of a historical manner. So it's been taught mostly as a descendant from C and not as a language in itself. And uh, I don't believe it should be taught this way. And I'm not the only one to believe this way. This is actually not my idea at all. I watched a talk by Kate Gregory uh, that she gave at CppCon15 and the talk is called Stop Teaching C. And of course it's not about stop stopping teaching C if you actually want to teach C, but it is about stopping teaching C if you want to teach C++. So what happened then is, at that time, I have been doing my PhD at the University of Bonn and I had to teach the students C++. So I thought, well, this is my chance to take those ideas, put them in the course and see how it goes. And that's exactly what I did. Um, I think the course turned out to be pretty decent, but it was targeted at uh, offline. Remember those days, right? The problem with that is that those videos are of pretty bad quality. So it's just me standing near the blackboard and then there is a projector that is recorded through the camera, so the quality is really not good. So the idea behind this course here is to kind of redo that course from, from before, but in a decent quality. In addition to that, uh, I have been in the industry for a couple more years since then, 
So I learned another trick or two. Um, and actually, that changed a little bit how I design software. So even content-wise, I believe that that previous course can be improved in this one. This actually brings me to the next topic that I would like to cover in this introduction. And this topic is, who am I? Uh, do I even know enough to teach you this course? And uh, well, this is debatable. I don't think um, anybody knows enough in C++, and you can easily verify that by watching the latest CppCon talks. Um, but I do think that I know a decent amount to at least uh, get you started on the journey. My name is Igor. I have been coding in C++ for about 15 years now, give or take, and 10 of those have been done professionally. I also hold a PhD in robotics uh, from the University of Bonn. So my experience mostly comes from that domain, from writing C++ code for different robots. After finishing my PhD, I've been working in industry. So I've been mostly involved uh, in the, again, self-driving cars domain. And I worked for both the big automotive companies as well as a couple of Bay Area startups. But all of those have been in the same industry. And that means that I have been designing and writing a bunch of um, high performance safety critical code in C++. In addition to that, I have written a couple of decently well received open source projects. They're available on my GitHub. And one of them in particular is a project that helps uh, coding in C++. So it's a it's a plugin for Sublime Text text editor, which helps you autocomplete your C++ code. So I think all of this gives me um, a decent overview of the language itself and uh, how to teach it, um, especially to new students, which is actually a good transition to the next uh, thing that I wanted to talk about. And this is the structure of this course. Most of the course is going to be consisting of uh, different videos where I either talk to you, well, or actually to the camera, uh, just like uh, this video over here. But there's also going to be other videos where there's going to be much more uh, code on the screen. And this code can appear either on the slides or um, in terms of some form of a live coding session where I will just code something uh, in, the, uh, in the text editor and show it on the screen. Whenever I do that, by all means, feel free to pause me and uh, try to follow along. In the end, if you uh, do it with your own hands, uh, you will actually learn much more than you would otherwise. Finally, there are uh, going to be assignments that you will have to do on your own, because in the end, learning is doing, and there is unfortunately no shortcut to that. I really urge you to uh, not skip on that, because in the end, if you want to learn something, and especially if you want to learn a programming language, um, the best way that I know of is to actually get your hands dirty and go through all the pain and suffering of trying to compile something and seeing hundreds of errors, only to eventually find the bug and feel the elation of uh, seeing your code actually do what you wanted it to do in the first place. I really, really highly recommend you to not skip that and invest um, a lot of time into doing things on your own. Now, as to the assignments themselves and what you can expect from those, um, they're going to be pretty varied. Um, we will start from something extremely simple. So first of all, we're going to cover how to work in a Unix-like Unix terminal. And then we're going to transition into the C++, where we'll, we're going to be starting with something extremely simple, like a Hello World application. We're going to go through an implementation of a simple, like a dead simple text-based game. Then uh, probably we're going to touch up on something like a very easy Photoshop filter, something like to blur your images or pixelate your images. Uh, we'll see how that goes. And uh, towards the end of the course, we're going to be working towards a game of Snake. I hope it tells you uh, guys anything. So it's, uh, it's an old time uh, game where you can control the snake. Uh, which basically just runs around the course and eats the fruit. Hopefully that's going to be fun enough. And if it's not enough, we can always add more stuff on top of that. Now, finally, uh, the last topic that I would like to cover in this introduction is what do you require to follow along with this course? And of course, the main thing that you need is some form of a laptop or a desktop PC on which you should be able to write code. 
The course is designed so that it can work in uh, any system, uh, in any of the popular systems at least. So if you have uh, Linux or Mac or a Windows uh, desktop or laptop, you should be able to follow along. The only caveat here is that I don't really know Windows enough, so I will mostly be targeting Unix-like systems. And that means that for Windows, you will have to install the WSL, so the Windows subsystem for Linux, in order to follow along. But uh, I'm going to guide you through that in a separate video. Don't worry about it. OK, the next thing that you might want to have is to have a GitHub account. Um, you only need that if you are planning to submit the, uh, the assignment. Um, and uh, I really strongly urge you to do that. It costs nothing, so the account is free. And uh, there's going to be a separate video on how you can set it up and submit your, um, your assignments uh, so that they get evaluated automatically. I hope that all works out. Now, finally, and uh, last but not least, you will need time. So you will need time and the will to go through this course. There's definitely going to be times when you will think, well, OK, it's actually hard uh, and I don't know what I'm doing here. And that's OK. With C++, that's a pretty standard feeling. And uh, I really urge you to plan uh, a lot of time for this and take it a bit slower than you might want to, uh, just to make sure that you can go through all the assignments, you can do all the work with your own hands. And you know, debugging your errors just takes time. So please be kind to yourself, take the time, and follow along. And with that, I think this sums up the introduction that I wanted to make. And uh, see you in the next videos. Bye.